Hey everybody, today's video is called Victory of the Lord, Not Egypt, and we continue our study today in Isaiah, where we're going to be looking at a very short chapter compared to what we've been going through these last several Isaiah chapters. We're going to be looking at the source of victory. And so Isaiah 31 verse 1 says, Woe to those who go down to Egypt for help and rely on horses, who trust in chariots because they are many, and in horsemen because they are very strong, but who do not look to the Holy One of Israel, nor seek the Lord. So Egypt's horses and chariots were numerous as we find back earlier in the Bible in the book of First Kings chapter 10 verse 28 and 29. And it's a flat topography as well, suited for chariotry. And they would be useful to Israel against the Assyrian cavalry. And what made Israel's uh, turn into Egypt most despicable was her accompanying turning away from the Lord while she fell more on the reliance of man through Egypt. And the psalmist in Psalm 20 verse 7 states that some boast in chariots and some in horses, but we will boast in the name of the Lord our God. And Israel did not seek God. Israel was not consulting God's prophets. And so we see Isaiah confronts two of Israel's sins in verse 1, trusting in man and forsaken God. And in verse 2 and 3 it says, Yet he also is wise and will bring disaster, and will not call back his words, but will arise against the house of the evildoers, and against the help of those who work in equity. Now the Egyptians are men and not God, their horses are flesh and not spirit. When the Lord stretches out his hand, both he who helps will fall, and he who is helped will fall down. They will perish together." So we see that Isaiah is my kind of friend, sarcastically. And Isaiah countered the unwise royal counselors who had advised dependence on Egypt. And God wouldn't back out of judgment. And now we know, of course, that God may relent bringing judgment, but God's not going to change his mind and be like, I'm doing the wrong thing right here. God may relent of judgment if the sinful nation repents as in the case of Nineveh in the book of Jonah, chapter 3, verse 5 through 10. And the Lord's wisdom prevails over man's or human's wisdom. And when we talk about the sovereignty of God, we must know that God is sovereign in judgment, and God is sovereign over the disasters that are used in judgment. As Isaiah 45, verse 7 tells us that the Lord creates calamity. And in verse 3, Hezekiah wisely chose to rely on the Lord and not the arm of flesh, as you can find back in the book of 2 Chronicles 33, verse 18. And so, long story short, Israel should be trusting in God, the God who is mighty over Egypt, the God who is sovereign over Egypt. In verse 4 and 5 says, For thus the Lord has said, that, spoken to me, as a lion roars, and as a young lion over his prey, when a multitude of shepherds is summoned against him, he will not be afraid of their voice, nor be disturbed by their noise. So the Lord of hosts will come down to fight for Mount Zion and for its hill. Like birds flying around, so will the Lord of hosts defend Jerusalem. Defending, he will also deliver it, passing over, he will preserve it. And so, in the defense of Jerusalem, we see that the Lord is to be a strong and determined lion, unafraid of shepherds that have summoned against him. And in verse 5, we see the comparison of birds being used. So, we see that the Lord is like a hovering mother bird with a strong attachment to her little ones and a willingness to do whatever it takes to, uh, you know, to necessitate their safety. And when Mo when Moses was on Mount Sinai in Exodus 19:4, we see the same language of God as being a mother bird over her, you know, little uh uh chicks or whatever you want to call them if you want to think of it like almost like a chicken. 
And then we also see the same language is used in Deuteronomy 32, verse 11 and 12 in the Song of Moses. And so God's faithfulness ought to have led the people to repentance. What God has done in the past for them should have been enough for them to rely on the Lord and be like, I'm an idiot, I need to turn back to the Lord. And Egypt could not make the same claim of dependability and care that God could. And reading this reminds me of the protective black drongo birds that I had to survive against in the territory, U.S. territory of Guam back in a military small deployment back in 2013. And when I got to Guam, I've never seen such a thing of birds that will come out of nowhere, dive down at you like they're going to attack your head and then fly around your head until you leave their zone that they're claiming. And these black drongo birds, they were so small, they were not even as big as a pigeon, if you have, if you know what a pigeon is. They're a very small bird, and they escort you away if you are in an area that they don't want you in. And, you know, I was like, I was dumb enough to start, you know, flailing my arms at them, thinking, you know, hey, maybe the stupid bird will leave me alone if I start swinging my arms around. No, it just made it more agitated and escorted me even further out of its uh, zone. And what you eventually learn about these types of birds is if you just let it, you just keep going your own way and ignore it, it will leave you quicker. In uh, verse 6 through 9, in Isaiah 31, it says, Return to him against whom the children of Israel have deeply revolted. For in that day every man shall throw his idols of silver and his idols of gold, sin, which your own hands have made for yourselves. Then Assyria shall fall by the sword, not a man, and a sword not of mankind shall devour him. But he shall flee from the sword, and his young men shall become forced labor. He shall cross over to his stronghold for fear, and his princes shall be afraid of the banner. Says the Lord, whose fire is in Zion, and whose furnace is in Jerusalem. So the prophet called rebellious Israel to repent in light of God's glorious dealings with them. And in verse 7, the obvious helplessness of the idols to deliver rendered them completely useless. And verse 8, the defeat of Assyria by other than human means matched this prophecy, as we'll also see later in the weeks to come in Isaiah chapter 37, verse 36 through 37, and that's actually about two weeks away. But other such foreign oppressors meet the same fate in the distant future of Israel during the time of Jacob's trouble. And in verse 9, both in Isaiah's near future and distant future, Jerusalem will be God's headquarters for bringing judgment on the foreign nations. And God himself is the fire waiting for all the enemies who attack Jerusalem. And Assyria will look for a place to hide. And they should have repented, turning toward God and away from anything that we put our that we have put in God's place. And so today's video, the main takeaway out of it is never put all your trust in man. Never put all your trust in a nation, a, a political leader any of those. In these verses, they were fulfilled when the Assyrian army devastated almost the entire land of Judah and camped on the outskirts of Jerusalem, waiting to conquer the nation by defending the capital city. But as we have discussed before in the book of 2 Kings 19, we see God sent the angel of the Lord who killed 185 Assyrian soldiers in one night. And it was a victory that had nothing to do with the sword of man. And God was more than able to protect Judah in Jerusalem. God doesn't need another man to protect his people. And so to wrap up real quick here, we look tonight at the Lord, or today, at the Lord would give victory, not Egypt. And woe to those who look to Egypt, not the Lord. And for us, we need to... 
look to Christ for the future. We should not be putting everything into a political candidate. It doesn't matter if it's Biden or Trump. They're going to both let you down. They are not your saviors. And in verse two, uh, 2 and 3, the Lord is mightier than the Egyptians. And what, one thing we should realize is that God is sovereign. The Lord is sovereign over world politicians. And the Lord is mightier than anything of man. And verse 4 and 5 shows us that the Lord defeat, uh, defends Mount Zion. And we see that the chapter ends with an invitation to repent to the God who is able to to deliver. In Revelation chapter 6 verse 16, I just want to read this verse by itself today. It says, and said to the mountains and rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of him who sits on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. You see, when enemies of God try to come against us, they, they go after God's people, one day they're going to try to flee but not be able to flee the judgment of God. They may run, but they can't hide. And as mentioned before, my friend Brian Peckham on Facebook is doing a study over the course of the summer he just started in the book of Revelation. So feel free to check that out. And that's going to end today's video. We'll see you next as we'll be looking at the king's reign of righteousness. So I hope you have a great rest of your weekend. God bless.